I'm Clara and welcome back to No Can Do. Today I'm going to show you how I took this trashed TV stand from Target and turned it into a timeless piece for my mom to put in her guest room. There were trials, there were tribulations, it was hard, I made mistakes, and ultimately I succeeded. So if you want to see what I did, how I did it, what I learned, and what not to do, just keep watching. I've made over one of these Target TV stands before, and while I loved that makeover, I tried a totally different style today. I did this for my mom because she's been asking me if I would make over a TV stand for her guest room. And I couldn't say no to that. So I got this large Target Windham TV stand off Facebook Marketplace for $40. As you can see, it was in pretty rough shape. So I went and I filled in some of the big holes with Quickwood and then I cleaned the whole piece really thoroughly with Simple Grain, which is a great cleaning and decreaser. Next, I tried to see if I could get the doors to hang straight. I had a problem with this the last time I flipped a Target TV stand, so I wanted to try and solve this problem outright if I could. These doors were really janky and I couldn't get them to hang right, so I decided just to leave them and deal with it later. Then I went through and I removed the rubber that was holding in the glass. I just used a flathead screwdriver to get under there and then I was able to lift the rest off and I took out the glass. I saved these rubber pieces for later because I wanted to use them to put the window back in at the end. I didn't like the look of the trellised window panes so I just popped them out. They're pretty easy to just kind of pop them out of place. And the nice thing about these is I save them and then I use them for paint stirring sticks and they work really well. So no need to waste anything or throw it away. There's always a use for something. Once the wood fill had hardened, I went in and I made some more repairs. This corner was really difficult to prepare because it was made of particle board or cardboard or something. <laughs> and it was also missing just a huge chunk. And also there was all these ridges that you can see there. So I did my best to sand with the sides and corner of my sander. And then I used a box cutter razor blade to kind of mold and shape what the corner should be. Honestly, I didn't love the quick wood for this. I think I needed something stronger. This was kind of melting in the heat and it wouldn't really dry or harden. So maybe I should have just put on thinner layers and have done multiple layers, but I just got it to a good enough point. I gave the top of the piece a scuff sand so that the paint will have a better surface to adhere to and then I wiped back all the sanding dust. A couple months ago I got this really cool hardware from a second hand store and so I knew I wanted to use this in the piece. So I went in into the room where the TV stand will go and I looked around at the carpet and at some of the decorations on the wall to see if I could find a color that I wanted to use for paint. Instead of buying new paint, I just decided to mix them myself using some colors that I already had. So I liked the blues and the grays that I was finding in the room, and so I tried to make a custom color. I started by pouring out some white Rust-Oleum chalked in linen white. And then listen, <laughs> I mixed brands this time and that could have been potentially fatal, but it actually worked out totally fine. It's all water-based. 
So then I put in a little bit of Annie Sloan, some more Rust-Oleum charcoal, and then another Annie Sloan blue. And honestly, I just kept mixing until I got a color that I thought looked decent. Once I was ready to paint, I just did a thin layer of paint all over the whole piece, knowing that I'd probably need to do a few coats to get good coverage over that red. sanded with a little bit of 320 grit sandpaper between coats. I like to do that by wrapping sandpaper over a sanding sponge. I just find that makes it really smooth. I did a couple more coats of paint, I think probably about three t in total, but unfortunately I wasn't satisfied with the repair work that I had done on that corner, so I busted out some Bondo after a bunch of my subscribers had been recommending that I try it. So I liked this better than the Quickwood, but it did harden for me a little too fast, I think just because it was so hot outside. So maybe next time I'd put in less of that red hardener that you saw me just squeeze on the sandpaper there. Anyway, it worked, I got it on, I let it dry, I shaped it, I sanded it, and I kept going. So I showed the TV stand to my mom and she liked it, but she thought it was a little too blue and wanted it grayer. So I gave her a bunch of different options and we decided to try a paint wash as an alternative to a new paint or to using a glaze. This was really fun. I just mixed up a bit of gray paint with water, about two to one water to paint. And then I lightly brushed this along the surface and then immediately wiped it back with a t-shirt rag. This ends up giving it kind of a streaked or aged look, which was nice, and it gave it some good texture and some much needed character.
after I was finished with all the painting and let everything dry, I decided to top coat. I wanted to spray my polycrylic top coat using my Wagner Flexio 3000 paint sprayer. By the way, I've linked every single thing I've used in this video down in the comments below. So if you want to check these things out, you definitely can. So after ruining my parents' driveway several times, I finally decided to buy a Wagner spray tent. So here I am setting it up for the very first time. Uh, and it was pretty easy to set up. I'm gonna do a whole review of the sprayer and the tent one day coming soon. So if you have any questions about the sprayer, let me know down in the comments and I'll try to answer them. My actual footage of spraying the top coat kind of just disappeared. I'm not sure where it went. So I have a tiny bit of footage, but not really. I'll just let you know that I did two coats of the top coat by spraying it with my sprayer and it looked fine. Uh, it did get a little gloopy at one point, but again, I'm gonna go into the pluses and minuses, ups and downs of the paint sprayer in another video coming soon. Time for the hardware. I cleaned the hardware just by soaking it in a cup of vinegar and a cup of water. And then I measured out my holes. My screw bit got stuck, but I fixed it. <laughs> and you can see just all the materials I was using there. And then it was time to do some finishing touches. So I went through on the hinges that I painted over and I just wanted to put on a little bit of liquid leaf. I love this product. Again, I'm linking it down below. It's one of my favorite products for furniture flipping. And I just went over with a little artist brush and painted on some liquid leaf. Unfortunately, there were a few little chips from when I was drilling, so don't worry, I touched up those little red bits. And now it's time to go stage it in my mom's room and see what she thinks of it. We put the doors back in and then took a step back and checked it out. For the big reveal, please make sure to hit subscribe down below. Thanks. Just a reminder, this is what I started with. It used to be from Target. Someone had owned it and beat it up. And here's what I ended up with. I feel really proud of this piece. Um, the lighting wasn't great in that room, but I think it looks really nice. I absolutely love this vintage hardware that I found, and I really like the gray on top of the blue. So unfortunately that corner isn't perfect. It was really, really, really hard to fix that, but I think I did a pretty good job. All in all, I don't ever wanna work with particle board again, but I learned a lot and hopefully you did too. I spent $40 on this piece and about $20 in materials, and I gave it to my mom. That's it for today, everyone. I flipped another TV stand from Target with a totally different look, and I will link that right over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next flip.